As most people know by now, two reporters lost their lives on national television this week. Now, this is a tragedy. It's always a tragedy when anyone loses their life unjustly. But let's keep it in perspective. It was two people that were killed by a disgruntled co-worker. That is, like I said, a tragedy, but it's not a national tragedy. Unfortunately, though, I see reporters trying to pretend like this is a national tragedy. I see them saying things like, well, this isn't technically a mass shooting, but it sure feels like one. It really, it feels like one. Two people die and it feels like a mass shooting. Did you know them? I didn't know them. It doesn't feel like a mass shooting to me. And even worse, I hear them say ridiculous things like a tragedy of this scope, something of this magnitude that demands a national debate. Really, this demands national debate. Two people losing their lives demands national debate. Soldiers losing their lives every day, that doesn't demand national debate. Young children who die in disadvantaged inner cities every day, who don't get to grow up and reach their potential, that doesn't demand national debate. Or heck, even the 27 people a day that die at the hands of drunk drivers, those people, that number of people losing their lives every day, that doesn't demand national debate. But these two people losing their lives, that demands national debate. I guess maybe because it happened on television. Well, that whole notion is kind of insulting to me. It kind of insults all those other people I mentioned. But since the media wants to pretend that this is something that demands national debate, let's talk about that national debate. Now, of course, the first person I saw on television trying to capitalize on this tragedy was Hillary Clinton. Surprise, surprise that Hillary Clinton decided to grab the limelight and say something about gun control. Immediately after this happens, I see Hillary on television saying, you know, we have to do something about guns in this country. Studies have shown that if we had less guns, we'd have less violence. We need background checks. We need waiting periods, etc., etc., etc. Well, let's address what she said. First off, where are these studies? I haven't seen them. Where are the studies that say if we had less guns, we'd have less crime? Now, I know there are studies that try to imply that through correlation, but if you actually dig into the data, you find out that that hypothesis is severely flawed. They love to compare uh, homogenous, high-income states that have strict gun laws with you know, diverse, low-income states that are border states that have higher crime and looser gun laws. And you just can't make that comparison because it's the other factors that matter there. Because if you throw in states like Oregon that are pretty homogenous and have very loose gun laws and we have very low crime rates, well, you kind of ruin the whole hypothesis. And I know there are studies that like to compare our nation to other nations like England and say, well, look at them. They have almost no guns and they have lower crime rates. Well, they have lower crime rates because they have higher social structures. They have higher national incomes. They have a less diverse population. They have lower density populations. Those are the reasons they have less crime. It's not because of guns. And now that they're having higher immigrant influxes in those countries, they're having massively soaring crime rates. So that kind of destroys that whole hypothesis. So those studies don't really exist, and the ones that do exist aren't really studies, they're just propaganda. So let's move on to the things she said that would stop this gun crime. Things like waiting periods and things like background checks. Okay, let's talk about background checks. This guy passed a background check. In fact, most people that commit mass shootings or any type of crime with a firearm passed a background check. Most people aren't criminals at the time that they buy a gun, it's later that they commit a criminal act. So what are you going to do? Are you going to start a background check that determines if people are likely to commit a crime? And what are you going to base that on? Their skin color? Their income? What are you going to base it on? I'd love to hear the criteria. Because the reality is, most guns that were used in a crime were obtained one of two ways. They were either bought perfectly legally with a background check, or they were stolen from someone that bought them legally with a background check. So background checks are not going to stop these crimes. Now let's talk about waiting periods. What type of waiting periods are we talking about? How long? This guy, and I'm not going to mention his name because he doesn't deserve the attention, he bought his gun months ago. They said he bought his gun right after the church shootings. That's months ago. That's not yesterday. So what type of waiting period would have stopped that? Uh, two months? Six months? A year? Ten years? What are we talking about here? The reality is, evidence doesn't support waiting lists. There's no evidence that someone will decide, well, I couldn't get a gun, so I'm not going to kill my ex-girlfriend today. They'll find another way to do it. They find other ways to do it every day. And there are hard facts that show that there were people that were threatened by an ex-spouse or a boyfriend, etc., who went to purchase a gun for self-defense and then got killed while they were waiting till they could pick that gun up. So in fact, in reality, there's more evidence to show that waiting periods harm people than there is that they help people. And the last thing she said that I want to address, and they all say this, is that, you know, after Sandy Hook, 90% of the people wanted to do something about guns. Well, that's misleading and misrepresentative. What people said after Sandy Hook was that 90% of people in polls said, yes, they would like to do something about gun crime. But then when they were more specifically asked, would you like more gun laws? About the same number of people said, no, we don't need more gun laws. We need to do things that would actually matter. 
Most people want to do things like increase educational opportunities, increase financial opportunities, increase security in places that need security, things like that. They want to do things that actually matter and will actually have a benefit for society and people, therefore bringing down crime. So I guess there's two things I really want to put across in this video today. The first thing being, when we pretend that this tragedy, and it is a tragedy, but when we pretend that it's bigger than it is or that it's a national tragedy, to me that's a slap in the face of firemen who sacrificed their lives, policemen that sacrificed their lives, soldiers that sacrificed their lives, children that lose their lives every day, people who lose their lives to drunk drivers. All those people matter too. And when we pretend that this is more important, it's like saying they're not as important, and to me that's an insult. And secondly, I want to say something to the politicians that like to capitalize this. There's actually two things I want to say to them. The first thing is, shut up. No one wants to hear your rhetoric. We all know your rhetoric, and we all know you actually have nothing real to say. You just want to score points. And the second thing I want to say is about that scoring points. Is this just catering to a base? When someone like Hillary Clinton, who you know has to be smart enough to do the math and know that none of the things she's saying is going to have any effect, she has to be at least that smart. I mean, look at her. She's obviously not a beauty, so it must be her brains that's getting her where she's going. So she has to be smart enough to know that the things she's saying are nonsense. So if she knows these things are nonsense, you have to say to yourself, is she just catering to her base? Is she just being a base politician? Is she just being the worst kind of political scoundrel you can imagine who plays to the fears and ignorance of others? Or are her motivations more sinister?